the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Welcome to a special Halloween edition of the good, uh, the bad, and the ugly of college football. Also, let us not forget that this is also the eve of the birthday of the boogeyman of goddamn college football. That being Nick Saban, his birthday is tomorrow on Halloween. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Well, 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 here we go again. It's another episode of the OCF. That's the Outlaw of College Football. That's me, JPC. That's right, Jesse Paul Clark on Facebook, spelled J-E-S-S-E, without the I. Also on Twitter, at OCF Productions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Halloween weekend, man. I've been seeing some crazy shit around campus around here. You know, I do a little Ubering on the side and uh, see some pretty interesting outfits from these fraternities and sororities out there <laughs> i'll leave it at that but today we're going to do the good and the ugly I haven't done that in a couple of weeks especially since it is halloween weekend like i said in the lead up as the boogeyman told you that one of his boogeyman counterparts tomorrow is his birthday that's the boogeyman of college football nick saban tomorrow is his 71st birthday so Happy birthday, Nick Saban. All right, let's get right into it here. The good and the ugly of college football this past weekend. Hmm, let's see. Who are we going to put on the list here? On the good list. Let's start off on the good list. On the good list, Kansas State. Kansas State <laughs> basically housed Oklahoma State now. Uh, in years past, that might not have been such a big deal. But Oklahoma State was a top-ranked team. I mean, they were in the top ten, if I'm not mistaken. And they got housed in a year that they're not they're not really rebuilding. They're not um, in a transition period like Oklahoma. So what was the excuse? I mean, I haven't really heard the press conference from uh, I'm a man, I'm 53 or 54, or 72, or however old that son of a bitch is. Uh, they've been uh, shouting from the mountaintops about respect and wanting to get respect, and then they get blowed out by Kansas State. Kansas State comes in the game and just houses Oklahoma State 48 to nothing with a banged-up Adrian Martinez on top of that. So, Kansas State has definitely proven themselves at least to be the second best team, in my opinion, in the Big 12. Now, that brings me to my ugly. I'm going to do a little combination here. Oklahoma State and Wake Forest, both two teams that have been shouting from the mountaintops about, hey, we deserve respect. They both finally get in the top 10, and what do they do? What do they do? They prove why. They are mid-carders. They prove why Oklahoma State and Wake Forest will always be considered no better than a high mid carter at best. <laughs> Eight and four, nine and three, at best. Occasional 10-win season, maybe, but not very often. As Oklahoma State, as I mentioned earlier, got blowed out 48 to nothing. And Wake Forest, it ranked in the top 10, sort of surprised me. They only lost one game to Clemson, and they played that game close, but they got blowed out by Louisville. Who is a middling team was four and three now five and three thanks to Wake Forest got blowed out forty eight to twenty one. 
The moral of the story on this class is that if you're a team that's aspiring to ascend from that mid-card status, when you get ranked in the top 10, you know, you might lose a game, but don't get blowed out. Don't get housed by a fellow mid-carder. And that's what happened to these two teams. Not only did they get beat, they got housed and embarrassed on the national stage. And now it's going to take a while for these teams to get back any kind of respect from the national media and people that do those rankings. By the way, we are on the cusp of those rankings. That's one of the goods, too. The playoff rankings are coming out, so now people can start saying, well, these playoff, these these rankings actually mean something. You know, a lot of people, they, they don't like the AP and the coaches' polls because they say they just don't mean anything, that they're biased and they're not real good a real good gauge of who the best college football teams are. So now they don't have that to complain about anymore. Now they've got the playoff rankings coming out, and these are supposed to be ones that are valid, although sometimes I question them as well. So we're on the cusp of that. So we're going to start seeing some real chatter and some real angst going about because, you know, every year when they come out with these playoff rankings, someone's got something to bitch about. And they'll have something to bitch about this year as well. Getting back to the good, the Oklahoma Sooners beat a real good defensive team on the road in Iowa State. And Iowa State may sure enough be 3-5 and five right now, but to me they're probably one of the best 3-5 and five teams out there, especially defensively. They could just get a slight upgrade in their offense, then Iowa State would probably be somewhere around 5-3 and three or 6-2. and two. But because they don't have hardly any offense, then you get what you get. In today's age of high-powered offenses and not such good defenses anymore, you're going to need more than 13 points a game to win a game, usually, unless you're playing your fellow in-state rival, Iowa, who don't score anything either. I don't know what it is about them Iowa teams up there, man. They can't come across any offense this year. But it was a very good win for Oklahoma, as I said in a previous podcast, that this was a game that really was a game that they needed in order to build um, towards the bigger picture. To get Bo eligible, it was very, very, very important because now Oklahoma, all they have to do is win one more game and they're Bo eligible. Uh they got Wake, uh, West Virginia and Baylor the next couple of weeks. They'll probably get that sixth win out of one of those two games, although Baylor did look good against Texas Tech. I think that Oklahoma can win one of those games. And, hell, the way Oklahoma State played against Kansas State, <laughs> maybe back to the same old, same old with Oklahoma State, you know, just being a middling mid-card team because I'm a man, I'm 53 once again, shits the bed when he gets a chance on a national stage. But, yeah, it was a great win for Oklahoma, especially in, the, in a uh, hostile environment as well. So it's a good program builder to start small, but the small means something. The small adds up to the big, and the big adds up to national championships, conference championships. All right, back to the bad. Brian Harson. <laughs> had a little uh, press conference, and uh, I'm going to throw some graphics up here in a little bit. Brian obviously must be wanting out at Auburn. I mean, from, from the comments he made in this press conference, <laughs> pretty horrendous. I mean, it's stuff you just don't say if you plan on keeping your job. I think Brian is on borrowed time. I think he knows he's out the door for whatever reason. Auburn hasn't pulled the plug. I guess they're trying to show they can be different and not pull the plug in the middle of the season like some of these teams, which made no sense to me. Auburn, to me, is actually doing it the right way for once because if you pull the plug in the middle of the season, all you're going to do is put somebody in that coach's place that was from the staff that you're not happy with. So why even pull the plug in the middle of the year, right? But Brian was asked, how do you get Auburn back on track? And he said, and he grinned when he said it. <laughs> he grinned and he said, what do you mean back on track? <laughs> it's just exhausting. <laughs> Brian, 
you've got to answer that question a little bit better than that, man. At least throw some coach speak in there and say, hey, we're doing the little things. We're trying to get the the little things kinked out. When we get those kinked out, you know, we'll probably show some progress. And going forward, we're just going to have to do what we can do to maybe be competitive and to show the Auburn Nation that we do want this team to overcome or something like that, man. Hell, I'm not even a coach or, or, or an educated guest speaker or anything, and I can come up with something better than that. You don't tell them that, what do you mean, get back on track? What do you mean? What do you mean, bro? Back on track, man. I mean, how does that have to be explained to you, bro? Uh, a fan base wants to hear some kind of hope, something from the coach to make them think that, hey, this guy hasn't just mailed it in, which is what he's done. I mean, but at least pretend, man. It, it, call hell, call Tebow, man. He'll show you how to pretend. He'll show you how to fake that shit. <laughs> and he also said, then he was asked about Auburn's poorest defense, about what can you do to make the defense better, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And he said, opposed to the defenses before we got here, but opposed to the defenses that were coached before we got here. <laughs> Once again, Brian, that, that man, that's a big bonker right there, man. That's a big <laughs> wrong answer. <laughs> People going to ask you what you need to do to make your defense better. What What is it that you see as a coach that you need to get better on? And you can give numerous answers to what you think that your defense needs to work on, but you don't go back in time. I like to use this analogy so much because I love this movie, the, the Back to the Future trilogies. You don't jump in the DeLorean with Marty and Doc and go back in time and blame Gus Malzahn and his staff. Although, truthfully, he's not really lying. Uh, the defenses at Auburn under Gus Malzahn, they weren't very great either. But, Brian as opposed to your defenses, I think you might want to take a double check on that, man. I think you might want to go back and uh, uh, check yourself a little bit because your defenses aren't better than Gus Malzahn's defenses. Not to me, they ain't. I mean, I haven't looked at the stats and compared them, but you really going to go back and blame Gus Malzahn's defenses for your defensive um, troubles? <laughs> like I said, I think O'Brien Harson has mailed it in. We can, I can safely say, unless Brian does something uh, astronomically great in these last few weeks, like went out and beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa, he's pretty much done. And you know, that shit's not going to happen. They're going to end up, right now they're three and five. They'll be lucky if they win one more game. They probably got a, a, a powder puff before Alabama because that's usually the tradition. With Alabama and Auburn, they both play a powder puff the week before to get ready for each other. So they might have four wins out, maybe maybe five wins, but I seriously, seriously doubt it. Uh, this team's probably going to end up four and eight, and Brian Harson will probably be flying back to Boise, or maybe he'll call Nick Saban and try to get a job at the Saban Car Wash. I don't know. Now back to the good. Arizona's offense. They scored 37 points on that Alex Grinch, the stench of L.A.'s defense. <laughs> oh, Alex Stinch. I mean, sorry, my bad. Alex Grinch's defenses, <laughs> man, they look like shit. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm trying to think of something, not, uh, not nice, but something a little more, um, not layman's terms, but layman's terms is all I can think of. And Man, you give up 37 points? I mean, that could be part of the bad. USC, Skittle shit and defense, give up 37 points to Arizona's offense. 45-37 was the final score, really? <laughs> man, I'm telling you, Lincoln, and y'all think I'm trolling y'all, man, because I, I get on here and I just grill the hell out of USC all the time. I know. I know I do. But I'm not trolling y'all when I'm telling y'all, man, this dude is going to cost y'all some games. He's already cost you the Utah game. Give up 43 points. Give up 37 to Arizona, man. <laughs> Arizona, they suck. Y'all give up 37 points to them, man. 
And going forward, Lincoln, you need to get rid of your buddy or USC's probably going to start losing three or four games every year. They may not go back to being four and eight under under Helton, but um, yeah, they're going to lose three or four games a year for the next forever until Lincoln Riley corrects the situation, which I hope he don't. I hope he continues to shit to bed, and I hope he continues to employ old Alex Winch or Alex Stinch or whatever you want to call him. Also, on the good, TCU beat West Virginia 41-31. Tough game for TCU, but they did what they had to do once again. That's what we're all about. That's the whole mantra this whole year. Do what you're supposed to do against those teams that you're supposed to beat. And they did. They went on the road in a hostile environment, pretty hard place to play most of the time. Although, from what I heard, there wasn't the stands weren't really as full as they should have been against them in that game. It being a, a, a t- top ten ranked team, you think that the crowds would be a little bit bigger. But West Virginia give TCU a pretty good game. TCU once again overcomes, just like they did last week, and that's what you have to do in a season where you're trying to make the playoffs. You got to get a couple of good uh you got to get a couple of good lucky breaks and you got to overcome in a couple of games. And TCU's done that both times when they've been put in situations where they look like they might lose the game. And it's a very good thing for the Big 12. Now, the teams in the Big 12 may not think that cuz they want to win the Big 12 Conference Championship at this point because that's all they have to shoot for. But as a whole and big picture, TCU winning is a good thing for the Big 12 as a conference going forward because if TCU makes the playoffs, it makes a little noise. It wins one game, maybe gets the national title game. I'm not going to go as far as to say they're going to win the national title. But it'd be a big step forward to Big 12, especially with the upcoming um, expansion and the fact Oklahoma and Texas are leaving in a couple of years and they're bringing in those new teams. And they're trying to get a new TV deal, and I don't know, they may have already struck that new TV deal. But nevertheless, this will help them going forward in their national scope and trying to get a nice little national TV deal. So keep on rooting for TCU. Also, um, like I said earlier, Baylor did beat Texas Tech. That was a big win for Baylor. Both these teams, I think, were four and three. So this game was big going forward for the one that won because it puts them in a good position to maybe contend for that Big 12 title game against TCU probably or basically get into a nicer, more extravagant bowl game. Also, North Carolina is quietly 7-1, and one, and they weren't, they weren't even ranked last week at 6-1, and one, which they probably should have been ranked. But them beating Pittsburgh – and them being 7-1 and one now, they should be ranked this week. Clemson fans should really like that because that's going to help their profile going forward and their strength of schedule, especially if North Carolina and Clemson play in the ACC title game. I'm not sure if they're on the schedule with each other in the regular season. I haven't looked at their regular season schedules for the rest of the year. But North Carolina going into the ACC title game with only one loss against Clemson with possibly no losses once again, will help their conference on national scope, just like with the whole Big 12 thing. So ACC fans, Clemson, y'all need to root for North Carolina to continue to win. And that's all I got to say about that today. You guys and guys tell me what your good and ugly of the week was. I may have left out some stuff that y'all may have wanted to touch on. Drop it in the comment section. Also, there is a little heart down here. If you don't mind, click on that. Hit thanks. Throw a few dollars in the coffers. Get us off his YouTube team. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.